The following program may contain subject matter and language suitable for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to another edition of The Meltdown with me, Jeff, and me, Norm, <laughs> <laughs> and you, audience. Well, uh, you, audience. <laughs> um, it's the caveman issue. I mean, the caveman episode. <laughs> well, actually, you know what? It's funny because even in, in old cave days, right? If somebody wanted you to, to, to do something, they'd, they'd make etches on the wall, and that was probably the first form of advertising. Yeah. Huh? Right. Did you see that lead in? I, yeah, that's very clever, Norm. I, you know, I can't help it. Uh, but yes, today our topic is misadvertising, and, and that can mean whatever. I don't even know if it's a real word, and of course we should know that having done an episode on etymology, oh, but yeah. really that was then, and this is now, so <laughs> we're calling the episode Misadvertising. Here she comes, misadvertising. Anyway. Um, yeah, so advertising or misadvertising, what is happening in the world? Uh, are people making you make the decisions that you don't realize you're making because they're making you make them? Mm. That's a long sentence. You might want to you might want to back up this this video and listen to that again. Very I can't, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it made some kind of sense. What what's your your ideas about what you had some ideas about branding and advertising? Yeah, it's sort of a branding or, if you will, rebranding. I'm noticing, too, uh, and I, we've, I've talked a lot about diet, and uh, I will sort of talk a lot about diet in various episodes this season, something that I'm fascinated with. Uh, one thing in particular is uh, the milk commercials. Um, a lot of people feel that cow's milk is actually not healthy for humans, and we can debate that all day long till the cows come home. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, there is there is that idea that you know a lot of people are off, off of dairy uh, completely or at least partially, and I'm noticing in the milk commercials, there's a lot of this sort of sentimentality. They're not talking about how good milk is for you because perhaps it's not, but they've got, I notice adults casting commercials as children. There's that sort of that sentimentality or they're equating it with milk and cookies. They're not talking about the nutrition in milk, if mm. it even exists. They're talking about the good old days and hey, remember when you were a child and you had milk and cookies and how much fun that was? Well, hey, if you're not feeding your children milk, then you're depriving them of something that you were not deprived of when you were a child. There's that sentimentality there. We've got a ton a ton of interesting advertising fun facts. A ton. These are some really interesting advertising facts. Okay. Ice cubes in beverage advertisements are typically made of acrylic so they won't melt under hot photography lights or move around. Hmm. Bubbles are made by adding detergent and water is added so light will filter through better. Well, well, that's kind of neat, eh? Yeah. Uh, here's another one. A York University study revealed that U.S. pharmaceutical companies spend twice as much on advertising as they do on research. Wow. That's, a, that's kind of a sad Yeah, well, fact. That's, that's, we could do a whole episode on pharmaceuticals, I think. That's uh, maybe a good idea. Because... <laughs> oh, yeah, we should do a whole episode on pharmaceuticals. <laughs> do you mean while on pharmaceuticals? Well, yeah. well, we'll hey, be, man, we'll welcome on, to the melt. Yes, uh, that will be on pharmaceuticals while we talk about right. pharmaceuticals. <laughs> okay, here's another one. More than $500 billion a year is spent on advertising worldwide. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's, I think that's not uh, a crazy fact. No. Uh, here's an interesting one. The first advertisement widely believed to be the first to feature a homosexual couple aired in 1994 when an Ikea ad featured two male companions shopping together for furniture. Mm. I remember that ad. Do you? I don't particularly remember that one, but I do sort of remember it becoming very mainstream. Yeah, it was, it was like a, it showed a bunch of different people. Yeah. And so it showed these two guys for a second, then it showed a uh, you know, guy and a girl for a second and, and whatever. Yeah. But I do remember that. Okay, here's another fact. In 2006, soda companies spent an estimated $492 million in advertising. In contrast, the Milk Processor Education Program, which sponsors the Got Milk ads, spent about $67 million. Mm. 
So 492 for pop, <laughs> 67 for milk. Okay, here's another fact. The average child in America watches over 40,000 television commercials in a year or over 100 a day. Wow. Huh? Except that's... in Quebec where that sort of thing is banned. What, what's banned? You cannot advertise to children in the province of Quebec. Turn on a turn on a children's uh, program on like a French channel yeah. or, or an English channel for that matter from from Quebec, and you will not see advertising to children. They are not you are not allowed to do that in Quebec, and that's been the law for quite some time. Well, I did I did not uh, I did not know that. <laughs> I did not know that. Yeah. See, even even I learned something on this show, <laughs> right? Which is pretty damn amazing. Yeah. Because I'm old and I don't learn much. <laughs> All right, here's another fact. Advertisers often use a technique called effective condition, which means they take a product and place it next to other things consumers feel positively about. For example, a detergent ad will juxtapose their brand with babies, sunshine, flowers, or other similar items. Repeatedly showing their brand with these items makes consumers feel good about the detergent too. <laughs> and we actually touched on that a little while ago, which is... Which is interesting. Yeah. Um, advertisers appeal to several common psychological themes to motivate people to buy their products. Some of the most common psychological appeals are to self-preservation, sex, self-esteem, fear, authority, and imitation. Except no imitations. Yep. <laughs> Here's another one. The first American magazine advertisement appeared in Benjamin Franklin's General Magazine in 1742. This one is really cool. Did you see the movie E.T.? Oh, yes, many Who years ago. Who hasn't seen E.T., yes, right? Yes, yes. So because the Mars Candy Company found the character E.T. in the movie, mm. E.T., the extraterrestrial, so ugly, yeah. they refused to allow M&Ms to act as a lure for the creature. You know, in that one scene. Yes. I Instead, know. Reese's Pieces were used. Yeah. Sales for Reese's Pieces went up 65% once the film was released. Yeah. Um, I, re I remember that. I remember the, the big Mars screw up and, and Reese's Pieces yeah. got lucky. Yeah. And obviously, E.T. was a very popular character, very popular movie. And yeah, the Reese's Pieces thing, that, was, that just skyrocketed. Totally. What a, that's one of those things afterwards you go, ah, shit. <laughs> Why didn't we just say yes? Yeah. So, speaking of stupid things, <laughs> Here's some advertising stupidness. Okay, so what we have gathered for you today is some uh, advertising fails. Now, a couple of these are very recent. Yeah. And then there's a whole bunch that maybe you haven't heard about. The first one you probably don't know about. Okay. The most complained about ad in Australia in 2010 was an ad from the Advanced Medical Institute about erectile dysfunction. To advertise the effectiveness of the drug, the ad showed a wife using her husband's erection as a step stool to reach something out of a high cover. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> well, <laughs> or, mm. <laughs> I mean, hey. Yeah. Okay, and who can forget the Pepsi ad that featured reality TV star Kendall Jenner leaving a photo shoot to join a heavily policed demonstration. In it, she diffuses the tension by walking to the police line and handing an officer a can of Pepsi, prompting <laughs> cheers. In a statement posted on its website, Pepsi said they did not intend to make light of serious issues. The much ridiculed advert was posted on YouTube on Tuesday on a Tuesday evening, but was no longer accessible there less than 24 hours later. For nearly two years, there have been protests about the use of force by police against African Americans. And this was a recent ad. This was this was right back in the Super Bowl, right? Yeah. Okay, here's here's another one that's fairly recent. German skincare brand Nivea also said sorry over its white is purity deodorant advert that was deemed discriminatory and racially insensitive. So those are a few advertising fails. Here's another one. In the UK, the co-op supermarket was accused of outrageous sexism in an ad for chocolate Easter eggs that encouraged parents to treat your daughter for doing the washing up. Uh, this one, I'm not sure if this was recent or not, and I'm not even sure if I've seen this, but you know the, the Snickers ads, uh, the ones where like there was one with Betty White. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, the playing soccer or something, and someone gives, gives her a Snickers bar, and she, he becomes this <laughs> player. Yeah. <clears throat> so... Snickers aired a TV ad featuring Mr. T as B.A. Baracus from the A-Team. Mm -hmm. 
It was pulled after it was accused of being insulting to gay men. Mr. T is shown firing Snickers chocolate bars at a man who's speed walking in tight yellow shorts while yelling, you are a disgrace to the man race. Wow. It's time to run like a real man. Confectionery giant Mars, which owns Snickers, released a statement saying the advert was intended to be funny, but that humor is highly subjective. Mm. It sure is. Yeah. And I pity the fool <laughs> that don't laugh at this commercial. I love it when a plan comes together. That was my George Papard to your Mr. T. Yes. Oh my God. So one day, years ago, I was just going through TV channels, and if I don't see a reality show about Mr. T, helping people with their personal emotional <laughs> problems. I'm not kidding. I, I don't know what it was called, hmm. but it was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and I've never seen it since. Oh. <laughs> okay, here's another um, advertising fail. There wasn't any cheering when the U.S. department store Bloomingdale's released its Christmas catalog two years ago. The photo of an attractive, well-dressed woman being eyeballed by an unsmiling man looked innocent enough. Until you read the creepy caption that said, Spike your best friend's eggnog when they're not looking. <laughs> the mm. online backlash was swift, with many interpreting it as supporting date rape. Mm. Bloomingdale's admitted the ad was in poor taste. Yes, it was. You know. I think they were trying to go for, uh, I don't know, what the hell would they be going for? I can see how people interpret it mm. as the way they did. So, yeah, yeah. I think you're, you're really walking a fine line there in that one. And uh, you'll like this one, Jeff. In 1996, <clears throat> Panasonic's Japan branch marketed a touchscreen PC with cartoon character Woody the Woodpecker as its brand mascot. The campaign slogan? Touch Woody, the internet pecker. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Okay, so we have one last advertising fail. Okay. In 2013, Hyundai ran a commercial in the UK that essentially said, our cars are so safe that you can't even commit suicide in them. <laughs> mm. The point was that the sedan doesn't produce harmful emissions like mm. other cars do, and unfortunately the campaign's creators thought a very good way to get that point across was to show a man's unsuccessful suicide. <laughs> And yeah, I that's mean, not a good idea for a commercial. <laughs> I, I I understand yeah. the whole emissions thing. Yeah. I think it would have been a a better thing to maybe equate it to uh, a car crash or you know something in yeah. where our cars won't kill you, yeah. as opposed to you can't even commit suicide in them and and then following this poor bugger as he yeah. can't even kill himself. Yeah. Jeff, you said you uh, you had uh, an advertising feel you wanted to share. Yeah, it just came to me as we were talking about the uh, the Mini Wheats commercials about, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. Okay. Uh, the little Mini Wheat uh, guy, you know, cute little guy, and he's preparing yeah. for a date with uh, his little Mini Wheat friend or whatever. And right near the end of the ad, he says, she'll be my love slave forever. <laughs> And I remember, I remember that. Yeah. about a week later, they changed it to, she'll be my true love forever. Uh, but for about a week, they had yeah. my love slave forever. Yeah. And of course, that, that, that got changed because people, understandably, were a bit upset by that. We're going to flash a uh, website address on screen now. And this website address is the official website for The Meltdown. You can read all about uh, myself, read all about Jeff. Uh, when you're finished being bored, you can then go and look at other things. Uh, but the most important thing is how you can have your own two-minute rant on our show next season. It's simple. Uh, if you've got access to a camera or your phone, and not pretty much everybody has access to a phone, you can record your rant and go to the website. All the details on how to get it to us and what's acceptable are there. We'd love to see you and love to, ha uh, love to have you as part of the show. So there you go. Anything else you want to add, Jeff? Uh, any, since we're talking about advertising, you want to plug anything? Please continue to watch and tell your friends about it and share it on Facebook and wherever else you can because, hey, it's a, it's a fun show, isn't it? Then we're happy to have all of you watching. So please tell your friends yeah. and family about it. Yeah, and join us if you can. And join us, uh, yes. And especially next week for our next episode of The Meltdown. Until then, we shall see you. So long.